Rivalry pushes man to be better, to improve, to try reaching incredible levels of perfection. In art, rivalry between geniuses has often resulted in masterpieces. Indeed, it was a rivalry between two men that transformed Rome into the most beautiful and modern city of 17th century Europe. each other. Their names Gian Lorenzo Bernini and Francesco Borromini. This is the story of their enmity. So let's get to know the contenders. Bernini was a very charming fellow, loved by all, always invited to the most important social events of the city. He was also an extremely passionate man and with a temper to match. When he was young, in a burst of fury and jealousy, he slashed his lover Costanza's face with a razor. There were whispered rumors that she had a secret love story with Bernini's brother. Very Italian. But most of all, Bernini was a fantastic sculptor, probably the most talented genius of Italian art after Michelangelo's death. However, not even Michelangelo, the divine, was able to make marble breathe and flow like Gian Lorenzo did. He was a complete artist, not only a sculptor, but a painter and a superb architect as well. Borromini, on the other hand, was a loner, neurotic, irrational, sometimes aggressive, and he was always dressed in black, just like a Spaniard. However, he was a brilliant architect, and what's more, he was a chess master engineer. He knew everything about walls, bricks, domes, arches, and how to design them. His reputation was of paramount importance for him. In 1649, he was working as the lead architect at the great basilica of San Giovanni in Laterano. One night, he caught one of his workers, Marco Antonio Bussone, smashing a huge stone against the church's brand new decorations. Borromini, furious with the traitor, ordered his assistants to beat him so badly that the poor guy died of his wounds. Borromini, not exactly a gentleman, huh? We are now in front of the Barberini Palace, built for Pope Urban VIII. This is a good example of the competition between Bernini and Borromini. The palace was started by Borromini's uncle, Carlo Maderno, but when he died, the Pope chose Bernini instead of Borromini to finish the job. Borromini was just Bernini's assistant. There is no friendship between the two, but they collaborate gorgeously. 
Bernini needs uh, Borromini's capacities as both a builder and a designer. Borromini needs Bernini because he is giving him the chance to work on a fantastic project. Incredibly, the palace is a successful mixture of their very different approaches. This is Bernini's staircase, a massive squared project. 62 wide steps leading guests to the Piano Nobile, with statues of Greek gods and heroes standing as silent observers along the way. This is Borominis, a nimble snail's shell of marble spiraling straight to heaven. Style Wars, the classic and adorned versus the fluid and simple. After this, Borominis' talent is truly noticed. Eventually, in 1634, he gets his uh, chance to shine. Not far from the Barberini Palace, the Order of the Trinitarians decide to build a church and a monastery. San Carlo alle Quattro Fontane. The project was revolutionary, eccentric, brilliant. No one had ever attempted anything like it. Borromini was the architect of the choice. Well, of course, he works for free and with low-cost materials. Bye-bye decorations, bye-bye angles. He leaves just curves to fool the visitor's eyes. Just white and a lot of light. breaks with the classical geometry of Renaissance architecture. It was an incredible success. Now Borromini is a star. Juan de Bonaventura, a monk of the order, wrote La chiesa è così rara a parer di tutti che pare non si trova altro simile nello artificioso et capriccioso raro e straordinario in tutto il mondo. To Bernini's eyes, Borromini's success was unacceptable. Borromini was just his assistant, wasn't he? Some years later, he gets the chance for revenge, building a new church 300 steps away from Borromini's San Carlo to prove himself and all of Rome that he was better than his enemy. Sant'Andrea al Quirinale. The church was almost a slap in the face to Borromini clean lines. It had a lot of light too, but full colored marbles, intricate stucco sculptures, and tons, tons of gold. So, who won? If there's ever been a winner, who became? the favorite of the popes, who was appointed to do St. Peter's famous square, and who decorated the holy bridge to the Vatican. The answer is Bernini. He's still considered the most important artist of Baroque Rome. He died old and rich, loved and highly regarded. Bernini is the artist who succeeded better than 
anyone else in transforming his imagination in something real and exciting. Just look at St. Peter's Square. And Borromini? Borromini, abandoned by friends and patrons, committed suicide on August the 3rd, 1667, falling on his sword, exactly like the Greek hero Ajax. Depression and bad temper destroyed him. He was a troubled spirit who never learned how to accept critiques or suggestions. But his vision of art was, and still is, clear and modern. And who wins now? Borromini speaks to your soul. Bernini captivates your eyes. The choice is yours. A legacy of masterpieces. Two geniuses. Two different ideas of architecture. One city. Roma.